Okay, hello and welcome. Thank you to all of you for joining us today for this informational session. We invite you to make yourself comfortable, grab something to drink, some tea, water, coffee, anything that's going to make you um, comfortable for the next hour as we go over the professional certificate in AR, VR, Development and 3D Graphics by NYU Tandem School of Engineering. My name is Kai Jarda and I'll be going through the session with you. So here we're gonna, I'm gonna introduce our keynote speaker in just a bit. We'll go over about the program in the school, NYU Tandem. Um, and we'll go over our faculty. And again, we'll talk about the program topics. Um, I'll come back on and talk about the learning, which will cover career prep and guidance um, and admission details. So thank you and welcome all. We're excited to be here. So with me today, uh, we have Michael Allison, who's the Director of Creative Technology. Uh, for local projects. So Michael, you want to jump on and say hello and tell the group a little bit about how the program came to be and a little bit about yourself. Hi, everybody. Nice to uh, see you. Nice to be here. Excited to talk about this course with you all. Um, <clears throat> the, this course came about uh, through some conversations with uh, uh, with the Tandon Engineering School on kind of looking at the what's the future of sort of the, uh, you know, media development and, you know, taking 2D into, into our new emerging 3D world and how can we empower students and professional uh, professionals to develop their skills uh, in this really interesting and diverse and unique field. And it's uh, because AR, VR is uh, such a complex topic uh, to design for and to build for that it takes a, a lot of different cross-discipline um, uh, 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 understanding and, and knowledge that it sort of had this uh, came, came came about because of try. Well, I, I came into the conversation because we were you know trying to find out how can we make more people uh, that are sort of at the intersection of all of these disciplines and how can we offer something that uniquely suits people who are not just trying to be engineers or not just trying to be designers but trying to be these uh, uh, people that are in the middle of, of all uh, the intersection of, of all, uh, you know, the three our emerging 3D uh, yeah, metaverse, you know, in our mixed reality. Uh, and what does it take to make, make people competent and literate in those uh, new emerging fields? So it's, uh, that's, that's sort of the, where we came from. And we, you know, consulted a lot of people over a lot of um, <clears throat> conversations and, and developed with the faculty in this course uh, myself uh, and and Tandon, um, we put together a really uh, robust and comprehensive program that uh, you know I think you're going to be excited to hear about today. Okay, great. Thank you, Michael, and thank you everyone. So if you might want to check in, Michael, and I'll go through um, just what we're going to get started. And I'll bring you back on, and we'll talk about the content. All right. Um, so before that, a little bit about NYU Tandem. So this school is really looking to empower people to use science and technology as tools to better society. So we're going to be innovating, learning things in class that you're going to be able to transfer them and make them actionable right away. That's one of the biggest draws that the program offers. This program has been around and established since 1854. So not only have we been doing this for quite a while, um, we are producing Nobel laureates, um, turning award winners and founders of CEOs. So. We are really looking forward to helping you um, create change and even in some senses and in, um, some instances, disrupt it yourself. Okay, so with that, I'll bring Michael on to go over the faculty introductions and who you'll be learning from. We'll go through the content again. Um, I'll be back for the learning experience. So with that, I'll pass it over to you, Michael. Great, thanks, Kai. <clears throat> so the uh, the faculty we have on this program, it's uh, it's a a long prog program um, that covers many different sections of material. So we have quite a few faculty that, uh, that you're going to meet along the journey. And uh, all everyone had a hand in building this curriculum together. Um, and it's uh, for a series, you know, a variety of creators, uh, uh, creative technologists, uh, engineers uh, coming together, uh, even a mathematician to put this, <laughs> put this together. Uh, so here, our first one is David Loebser. He's a uh, creative technologist um, at Luxury Escapism, and he's a VR creator, he, uh, a popular VR um, expressive interactive experience called Cosmic Sugar. And he's taught animation and creative coding at Harvard, NYU, SBA, CU, and Parsons. And he's uh, 
his work has been shared all over all over the place a, a variety of different festivals and and um, uh, outlets for for engaging in interactive media so david lobster is great he, he leads the final section of the course where we're developing an actual capstone project um, and the next uh, amazing faculty we have uh, is Alexandros Latsos or Alex Latsos. Uh, he's the co-founder and lead developer at Unseen Media, and he's which is a Brooklyn-based creative technology uh, uh, company. He's also a STEM, uh, a STEAM educator, and he has a background in mathematics, philosophy, and digital media. He um, leads the uh, sort of introductory to Unity section of the course, which is all about learning the basics of the Unity editor, the Unity engine, and Understanding basic three, three understanding basic three D and how to work in a three D world, uh, and he bring he uses uh, he, he brings his background in mathematics and, and looks at it through the lens of Unity and gets hands on uh, in exploring how to manipulate a three D world together is really really cool. So uh, that's when you'll see him sort of early in the course, and then next um, we have uh, Rui Pereira. And Rui is a uh, really amazing creative technologist as well. He and a spatial computing consultant. So he's really about bringing uh, the digital, physical, uh, 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 mixed reality experiences to life. He's worked with uh, IDEO, Havas, Google, and, and uh, Microsoft. He's uh, he, Rui. He comes in and at the sort of um, end of the Unity introduction and gets into AR and AR mobile development specifically, and looking at the various types of AR development uh, that can be done uh, through, through Unity and AR Foundation and uh, uh, Euphoria. So it's a great mix of tools that he teaches, uh, as well as a great series of techniques and design uh, principles for engaging with uh, AR mobile development. And then we move on uh, to me, yes, <laughs> I'm uh, Michael Allison, the local uh, director of creative technology at Local Projects. Uh, I am, I have been working with XR for a long time, and uh, in particularly, I teach all of the VR sections of this course. There's two major, and as well as the introduction uh, to, to what XR is. Um, I recently have been uh, teaching, before I was the director of creative technology, I was uh, uh, teaching. Um, at the interactive media program in Abu Dhabi for NYU, um, and that you know bringing bringing the same kind of curriculum to life, teaching immersive storytelling, and uh, recently won an award for the best immersive storytelling at the Tribeca Film Festival for a, for a work called The Changing Same, uh, which was a uh, immersive uh, immersive narrative, uh, uh, Afrofuturistic uh, narrative. Very, very very cool stuff. It was a great team we worked with, um, and. Uh, yeah, so that's that's a bit about me. So I've been working in Unity for a long time in various various capacities, and so uh, we sort of I you know with along with the team we sort of led this uh, effort to create this curriculum in a way that would not only teach you Unity but teach you about XR, teach you about the principles of design around how to think about approaching XR projects, and then uh, at, at finally at the end to craft your own projects. But let's talk about more of that that uh, how how the pro how this whole course is structured. So let's move on to the um, program overview here. And so let's see what we're getting ourselves into. And this is going to be a seven-month program. And it provides uh, not just traditional software engineers and developers, but or people with computer uh, science-related degrees, but a lot of different people we'll talk about in a moment uh, with the XR essential needs, uh, XR essentials that you need to build experiences in a game engine and uh, use scripting to create, navigate, and customize 3D graphic assets to construct virtual environments. That's a big mouthful to say that this seven-month program is about how to build the metaverse, essentially, how to build a mixed reality, uh, physical, digital uh, spaces, and how to think in, about um, and explore the tools that uh, Unity has to offer. And so the key takeaways are going to be building your uh, ability to work with XR inside of Unity, apply C sharp programming to customize how Unity behaves, understanding just how to use the Unity game engine itself, uh, even outside of the context of XR. Um, but it also, and going beyond just the tooling and understanding the technology, but understanding the types of role that an XR developer plays in inside the ecosystem of a larger project uh, and the workflows within an XR development ecosystem and, then, and how, to, how to navigate conceiving of designing and prototyping a real project for XR. And that uh, ultimately the, the culminate will culminate in a portfolio with a variety of digital samples, including your final project. That's a uh, 
prototype pitch and documentation uh, experience. So let's uh, keep moving here and talk about who should attend. And uh, as I was saying, this course is designed, uh, we, we had a few different people in mind while we were designing this uh, curriculum and the kind of like major demographic was people who have some sort of a background in uh, computer science or some background in uh, software development um, who are possibly either just out of school or in school or who are uh, in professional careers and looking to expand their skill sets. Uh, it, basically, anybody in that spectrum looking to develop their professional skills in, in this new and exciting realm, that's, it, that's who we were targeting. But we're also looking at technical artists, people who have been working adjacent uh, to the sort of game engine world, people that are working, or, or even the 3D world, uh, people that are working in 3D content authoring tools like Maya or uh, Cinema 4D or, or Blender or something like that. Uh, but people that are have maybe have some background that are doing that with a little background in programming that are looking to kind of make a dive deeper into um, into that technical art realm, into uh, uh, XR development and becoming sort of uh, a little bit more uh, hands-on in the mix of how, how to make these things. But the, the key thing for everybody is that participants in this program should have a foundational understanding of mathematics and some scripting language experience. And that means... It could be programming, it could be scripting, it could be, you know, basic, uh, just a basic understanding of programming concepts. There is, you know, it, the, the great thing about the Unity engine is that it's not entirely driven by script and by type, you know, te text-based um, uh, programming, but it, it, it's, it's a combination of learning how to use the editor and how to really empower a custom functionality with scripting. And in order to you know, access that scripting part, it's really important to know some basic concepts around programming, like control flow things, like if statements and for loops and what variables are and you know, how to use them. And you know, so if, if those are the things, if you're missing those things, I would say you, should, you should maybe uh, do, a, do a warm up course in, uh, in uh, some sort of programming language that's uh, you know, like a, a script based programming language. And so you can kind of get some fundamental skills, uh, a baseline for, for engaging in this material. Uh, it's, it's possible to sort of uh, make your way through it, but uh, having some background is, is going to be key so you don't get lost. Um, and uh, yeah, so, but we're also not going to be doing any 3D asset development necessarily ourselves. We learn prototyping tools inside of Unity. Um, so really, it's just a matter of understanding some basic math so you don't get lost there uh, and some basic uh, programming experience uh, with you know, either a pro real programming language, scripting language or something similar. So let's look at some of the uh, profiles of, of folks who we thought about when, when we conceived of this. And that's like I already mentioned the software developers and engineers who are looking to understand XR. What is it all about? I keep hearing the metaverse thing. Facebook changed their name to Meta. And now like uh, the, the whole thing's going on. I wanna, I wanna understand what this is and get a, become a part of that. Uh, exciting world. It seems really cool and amazing. And um, so those those types of people that are out there uh, already with their that with a background in software development and engineering, you'll be very comfortable in this course because that's the primary demographic we were thinking of. Um, furthermore, people that are already UX, AR, VR, XR developers, uh, people that are just uh, want to get deeper into the content. Maybe you're already there, but you're like, oh, I need to get a little bit more into this headspace, I really, or maybe you're coming from like Unreal Engine and you want to learn Unity. This is a great way to do that. So people that are coming from another um, environment and need to learn how to do this in Unity, this is a, a wonderful way to do that. The, uh, similarly, game developers that are already working uh, with game engines, building games, uh, maybe even Unity developers that just want to learn how to use the XR components and how to do the graphics better. That's, uh, this is also a great place for you. And then the demographic that's near and dear to my heart, the creative developers, creative technologists, folks that are out there working across different uh, technology stacks all the time and looking for new ways to prototype and pre-visualize things and do things quicker. Um, under, you know, game engines are an amazing tool uh, for us in, in, to, to bring uh, graphics and interactive experiences to life really quickly. And uh, so this is, this is another, uh, if, you're, if you're one of these people and you just haven't, um, 
had time to learn a Unity game engine or engage uh, with XR development, this is a great, uh, a great class for you. Um, 3D artists, as I said, 3D artists and aspiring technical artists, people that are already adjacent to the 3D world who have some not prior, you know, they're building 3D content, but also have a little bit of scripting um, background. You're going to be, you know, really empowered by how you can take your creations and bring them to life inside the Unity game engine uh, and build amazing things really fast uh, and really efficiently um, it, it without, you know, there, there's a learning curve, but you'll realize once you get over the curve, how how flexible and easy and fun it is to develop things uh, quickly and prototype things in, 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 right in VR uh, at, a, at a, a really amazing uh, speed. But the, the technology landscape we're in now for this type of work is just really blossoming and really um, the tooling is really kind of amazing. And, and you'll all see that throughout, throughout this course. Um, so that's, that's, you know, and if you don't find yourself in one of these categories, that's okay too. Maybe we can talk about, you know, more about who you are and where you're coming from. And if this is a right, a good fit for you in this program, um, uh, because it's not, you know, these are the people we had in mind, but there's all, uh, it takes all types, uh, to, to bring this re new reality of 3d and immersive, uh, media into the, into reality for us and, and become a part of our lives. So it's going to take everybody and, uh, you know, if you don't see yourself represented here, it doesn't mean it's not for you. Uh, it just means that we should talk about it and, uh, you know, we'll find out if it is right. So uh, feel free to drop those questions into the, into the Q&A. Um, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's keep moving here and talk about the program topics, uh, real world applications, featured tools, et cetera. So what is, what's really in this program, right? Like we're going to drill down, I'm going to kind of give you the overview of what all the content is. Uh, it's a seven month program, provides, uh, as I said, so it's, it's a long one but it's, um, it's long on purpose because there's a lot of ground to cover. XR is, as you can imagine, a very deep topic. And not only do we need to fill you in or on the background of what it is, uh, we need to give you more understanding of the design approach and, and uh, what Unity is. And we have a lot of ground to cover with just understanding how to use Unity, let alone use XR inside of the Unity ecosystem. So um, it's to, to accomplish this large feat, we've di divided the content into five digestible sections that span anywhere from, um, you know, uh, three, three, three to several weeks. I can't remember the longest one actually, but we'll, we'll see here. Um, this program is, yeah, uh, we got five sections, foundations of XR, 3D math and unity development, construction of virtual environments, high definition, high definition XR. And then lastly, uh, the uh, capstone project uh, uh, development. And so let's dive into those in more detail. So section one, this is where we begin. I lead this section and uh, introduce the concept of what is extended reality. And we get an overview of the past, present, and future uh, of it. But it, as you can imagine, it's a rapidly changing um, uh, field. So, you know, even as the time of recording that, that coursework, new developments have taken place. And the idea there is to just learn how to think about approaching, staying on top of, of what's happening in the XR world and becoming passionate about being a part of the community, about understanding uh, what's happening on the cutting edge there and really trying to excite everybody uh, in, into you know, this, this world that you're stepping into. Um, then we move in the next week into XR design principles and looking at the sort of hierarchy of design for XR because the de designing for XR is just the tip of the iceberg uh, of, a, of a series of different other design disciplines um, that it builds off of. So we're looking at those sort of from the ground up and, and saying, where, how do we approach thinking about designing things and what are the important topics and how to, how to align ourselves on jargon that we're going to be using throughout the course when talking about um, uh, working with XR and, and, and design topics. And then we, and we also have uh, in there, uh, we're talking about the roles and interactions and workflows flows within an XR project. So sort of breaking down uh, how the XR developer fits into the ecosystem of, of a bigger project and a bigger team. Uh, and we even talk uh, to a, a guest speaker who, who we'll see in the next slide. Uh, but before we get there, we have week three, developing with a game engine. That's just, you know, getting our hands dirty, loading up all the software we need to do this work and understanding what the environment is and how to use it uh, and giving some background on what game engines are. So at the end of this first three week section, you really are all set up for success to move into the rest of this content. So you know what's going on, you know uh, you know where we're coming from and, and you're set up for doing the work. 
And so let's go to the next slide and we'll talk about our who, who we chat with here. Wembo Lan, who's a full stack AR VR engineer for Meta, is a guest, guest speaker um, in week two. And we talk, uh, we have a really great conversation about what it's like to be a real professional working out there in the world. Um, where he works the HoloLens in the med tech world, uh, building uh, AR head mounted AR applications for you know surgeons and medical imagers. Uh, medical imaging professionals uh, to to you know work with their work with their patients and, and work with their clients on a variety of things. So he's really out there, and we have an amazing conversation of what it's like to actually be on this cutting edge field as a professional, which I think everyone will find really fascinating. So we enter section two. Alex takes over this section, and he dives into the Unity uh, basics and vector fundamentals, and vectors being you know three dimensional. Um, representations of coordinates and directions and positions and how to um, learn to use the Unity editor GUI and how to work with basic game objects and you know, get the fundamentals going for working inside the Unity environment. And then, and then moving into scripting, how to actually use uh, C Sharp to customize Unity's behavior. And then uh, in the next weeks, actually scripting interactions use and bringing your own input into the system. So it's one thing to create a system that works by itself, but as we all know, we wanna bring input into this system. We wanna interact with it. So how do we actually bring interactions into Unity itself? And then we explore uh, UI and animation, how to make bring things more to life, build tools that we can actually interact with uh, as user interfaces, uh, et cetera. So this is, none of this is necessarily a, a VR or XR specific. This is really just Unity basics. Uh, here in this section that are applicable far, uh, you know, far beyond XR just for Unity and game engine work in general. But this section is not over yet because it's a long one. Uh, there's a lot of basics to cover. So in the next slide, uh, we'll see that there are, in fact, four more weeks of uh, digging into the basics. But here we actually start entering the XR realm. And so we, after learning about ray casting and quaternions, which may sound intimidating now, but as you'll see, Unity, working in Unity uh, makes 3D math really accessible because it's so visual and you understand immediately what the outcome of what you're doing uh, is. And so you, you, while you may be dealing with higher order mathematic concepts like quaternions that represent rotations, you just, you'll see the thing rotating and it'll make sense what, what's going on. And so it's a very visual learning environment uh, being hands-on with it. And that's, Alex is, does a great job of, of bringing that mathematics to life visually inside the editor. So it's not such a, you know, we're not doing math on paper here. We're doing it real, you know, in the Unity engine, making things, uh, making making small games to, to illustrate these concepts. Um, and so in the last three weeks of this section is when we start diving into XR for real. And that's um, in the three levels and the three tiers of sort of approaching AR for, for mobile, like a, a mobile, mobile phone based AR. And so that's uh, image tracking, in that first week in understanding how to uh, track images using Vuforia, the Vuforia library with Unity. Uh, and then in the next week, creating an AR experience where not, we go beyond tracking 2D images to, track, to tracking objects and recognizing objects and how what are the unique interactions around that. And then in week uh, 11, uh, actual surface tracking and learning about uh, Unity's AR foundation and the SLAM algorithm, simultaneous location and mapping algorithm, how it works. Uh, you don't have to know the basic the details of how it works, just understanding how to use it uh, and how to recognize surfaces. And that is where the world of AR really opens up because now you can walk into any environment and detect uh, what the kind of surface structure is and now apply uh, virtual um, graphics over the top of those structures and interact with, with these digital objects. Uh, really, really awesome. So that's where, that's where we land and everything gets built uh, ultimately to the, a mobile device uh, and that becomes part of your portfolio of work. And we'll move on to the next section there. Um, so following this, we're then into constructing virtual environments. This is where I pick, pick the course back up and we get into VR. We dive right into VR this first week, week 12, we go from nothing to a full interactive XR VR prototype. Um, and so talking about, and, and this just goes to show you how amazing the tooling is inside of Unity for working with XR and working with VR. Uh, you can go from just understanding Unity ba the basics to bringing in the whole XR interaction toolkit, gray boxing out an environment, uh, and just 
create your, your own uh, six, off, six degrees of freedom room scale VR experience end to end and uh, navigate. We, we, we create, a, we create a, a, fun, uh, a fun maze experience uh, where we kind of get lost in our own creations. Um, and so from there, after we get the basics of how to, how to use the XR capabilities, uh, the VR capabilities specifically in Unity, then we move on to how to create interactions with um, hands, uh, you know, bringing your hands into the equation. So it's not just about uh, your, you know, where you're looking and where you're standing, but also what your hands are doing and how you're engaging with the digital world. Uh, so that's in, in, in this uh, in this week we design physical user interfaces to uh, manipulate that we can use to manipulate our digital environments um, with actually uh, digital tactile interfaces, right? Uh, building buttons and, and levers and switches and things uh, inside the virtual environment. And then you know from there we've got the the real core fundamentals of how to work with VR in just those two weeks. How to bring somebody in, to create a world that you can be inside of, and how to interact with it with your hands and your and 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 uh, where you know uh, and your head. And then um, we need to start understanding 3D computer graphics at this point because this is where we really start to say, okay, this is great, I like a prototype, but how do I take this to the next level? How do I how do I really uh, leverage Unity's rendering capabilities to um, <clears throat> create uh, create really stunning environments and, and stunning graphics. Uh, and so this is where we have to go from, uh, we have a crash course in computer graphics. So we go from zero to zero to shaders, understanding, and, and to understand what a, a shader is, is such a very specific concept that takes a lot of foundational learning to understand. So we do a real crash course in, in computer graphics from the ground up, understanding how your computer actually renders things onto your screen um, to give you that really core background information. And then we get hands-on writing some shaders inside of Unity. Uh, but then, in, uh, you know, if that, that seems crazy, right? But then in the next week, we learn a new tool that Unity has to offer that makes that a lot easier. And that's called the shader graph. And so it's hard to, it's hard to use the shader graph without understanding all the concept of what, what a shader is. So the week 14 and 15 are the heavy duty um, uh, computer graphics part of the course. And that sets up the foundation for working with Unity's graphics throughout the rest of, of the, your time in the game engine. Uh, and then so from there, we go into another huge, huge hugely important uh, 3D graphics consideration, which is lighting and how to uh, construct and light a virtual world inside of Unity and using Unity's tools for real-time lighting and baked lighting and understanding the differences and how to use them and troubleshoot them uh, along the way. And then finally, in week 17, we learn to manage these virtual worlds by using multi-scene um, uh, management and how to navigate multi-scene uh, uh, constructions in the game en engine in, with VR in mind and how to make it uh, not disrupted for a user and make really compelling transitions from one scene to the next. Um, and that's, uh, you know, the, by the end of this, you have all the core components for building anything you want in VR. It's, uh, and, and we do this all in the universal render pipeline and ultimately build it to and deploy our creations to uh, an Oculus Quest, which is now called the Meta Quest, I, I realize. Uh, the Meta Quest 2, in fact. But um, Oculus Quest 2 is, this, is the same thing. So, um, yeah, so we, we are, this is for standalone VR, uh, or this is geared towards standalone VR. And then in the next section, uh, section four, we actually go back, back, take a step back and say, okay, what about high definition? What else does Unity have to offer? And Unity has the high definition render pipeline to offer. And it is a robust set of tools for making really high quality visualizations. Uh, and this is where we start talking about, we, in this whole section, we're basically breaking down what it takes to create an architectural visualization that is really high fidelity. Because you can do that type of thing and it's, and it's amazing to see. And it's like really photorealistic being in another uh, place. And these are tools at your disposal. So, you know, understanding how to use them is, is really uh, very empowering. So in these four weeks, we cover, you know, what high definition visualization is and look at how it differs from what we just did in the universal rendering uh, pipeline and scenario. <clears throat> and we break down this uh, architectural visualization. And then in week 19, we build it back up for, and, and say, how, do, how would we make our own? And what, what, are, what do we need in order to, uh, you know, uh, create this, um, uh, a creative visualization like this. So we take an asset pack that exists because high definition starts with, with asset creation. We're not doing that in this course, but we're taking pre-constructed uh, physically based um, ma uh, materials and objects, and we're bringing them into the engine and building up uh, a really high quality visualization with them using Unity's tools. So 
understanding how the workflow works is what that's all about. And then um, in the last two weeks, we get into more advanced topics of creating realistic interactions, how to use the runtime rigging system to manipulate hand, uh, virtual hand poses so that our virtual hands can actually shape to the virtual objects they're, they're grasping, uh, which may seem like a subtle thing, but it actually adds an amazing amount of realism and high definition to our interactions inside the XR pipeline. And then um, lastly, we end with my favorite uh, uh, week in the whole course, which is uh, procedural animation, uh, learning the visual effects graph, which is like a particle system uh, tool for creating really amazing visual effects and how to go beyond just the basic default visuals that you get uh, with out of the box with the Unity XR interaction toolkit and really augment them and make them your own with um, with the visual effects graph. So it's a really fun, magi a magical experience, I'll say, that may or may not involve some magic wands and such. So it's it's really it's really a, a fun, amazing course uh, to put there sort of at the end uh, of that sec of the XR or the VR uh, uh, sections. And then in the final section, this is where David Lobster takes over and takes you through how to go from concept to pitch to prototype, um, or maybe it's concept prototype to pitch, I forget, we'll see here. <laughs> but he, he walks through the whole capstone uh, process. And this is where you as a uh, creative get to come and say, okay, I've had this project idea. Maybe you have one now. Maybe you're gonna develop one in uh, the first weeks of the course. Maybe there's something that you want to build, right? That's what brought you here. Something is interesting to you about XR and you're like, okay, now this, this section five, you've gotten all the tools you need. You've gotten all the information you need. And now it's your time to shine and put something together and, and, and uh, put, put some life to your own project. And um, it starts and he walks through how to start that and how to think about that. And this is also professional development for anyone that's an independent creator. How might you make, uh, create, prototype and pitch your own independent project? Or for those that are coming from like a company, maybe you have a, a maybe you're the CEO of a company and you're evaluating whether XR is right for your products, or you have a product that you're thinking of creating an XR or whatever it is. Um, this is where you could actually start envisioning that and get some uh, critical feedback from professional from David Lobster's uh, or, or, or from uh, his content and from your community of learners uh, on on your ideas and, and continue to develop that. And that starts with style framing and research and development about what you're going to make. And it moves into planning, scoping, and designing for documentation. And then um, from there, actually designing the UX and then really starting to get feedback. And so this section five is all about feedback from your peers and your instructors uh, to you know kind of keep, keep developing these ideas in the right direction. Uh, and then week 25, you get uh, some strategic to project development time, which is you know you need to continue working on the work. And um, we there's some special topics highlighted, some conversations. David and I have a conversation uh, about, uh, an actual, about an actual XR immersive storytelling project um, and uh, talking about you know, the foibles and, and, uh, and the, the high points and low points of the project, uh, just to give you a realistic look at what it's like building something with Unity on a team. Um, and then talking about in the last uh, second to last week here, how, to, how you might go about distributing and documenting. And, Documentation is so important because this is how your project's going to live beyond a prototype and how you're going to communicate what your project's all about to your peers, to your employer, to your potential customers, to fun potential investors, whoever it is that you're targeting. Um, this documenting is so key. So it's really touched on throughout every week of this course, uh, how to, how to, uh, to, to work, work towards building something that's really effective in communicating what your ideas are. And then in the last week, we celebrate all everybody's amazing work throughout the whole entire seven months of this course uh, with the uh, project presentation. And uh, you present and share your capstone project. And uh, it was an exciting time. And you know, at the end of this, you're basically uh, you know, an XR ready, ready to go uh, professional. So um, that's where I'll, I'll leave my uh, deep, deep dive. Oh yeah, lastly, the real world application. So I talked about this a lot the whole time, but it's not just you know, conceptual, it's not just uh, for fun. Throughout the entire course, we're touching on what, how this works out there and, and what it's like to be a professional and what are the important things. And that's talking from talking to a real professional from MetaViz and, and the med tech world uh, to getting hands-on experience, working with the largest consumer, uh, widely available VR uh, uh, system out there, which is the Oculus Quest, Quest which has actually uh, been rebranded to the MetaQuest. Um, and, uh, and then also learning the workflows around how 
to create a production and how to uh, think of yourself as an XR, uh, as one of the uh, a core XR person inside of a larger creative team that's building an XR project. Um, and then going, how to take that project from pitch to prototype from really just conceiving of what it is to actually making a prototype of it that's successful and communicating what your vision is, uh, which, which is so important in, in this world. Uh, because, you know, a lot of people don't know about XR. They don't know, uh, you know, it's hard for them to imagine these new ideas that are so out there that seem so far out there. So uh, learning to communicate and talk about it and how to, how to uh, excite other people the way that you're excited about it is what's so important in that, in that process. Um, and then we, and we get a lot of industry examples about non-gaming uh, uses of XR, um, which we, that whole high definition section is about uh, architectural visualization. And uh, we also, and we touch on immersive, uh, immersive media, immersive storytelling. So there's other types of non-game specific things that are, there's all kinds of verticals actually out there in the, in the XR world that are using XR and bringing it into their, into their, uh, workflows and into their um, industry in new new and exciting ways that, you know, we, we touch on those, of course. And then lastly, it, my experience, I, I formerly was working as a senior software engineer at Scatter um, when I was uh, uh, teaching at the university and also building this course. And so we hear my experience, um, uh, David and I have a great conversation about my experience working with them on XR pieces. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fun conversation about um, uh, some, some uh, work out there in the wild. Uh, so that's the real world applications. And then I think there's one more slide on the sort of hard, hard, tangible things that we learn. And this is Unity. We're using Unity. We learn how to use Unity. By the end, you're going to feel comfortable using Unity for anything that you would want, um, but, but specifically XR and the XR interaction toolkit as well. Uh, the, how, you know, you're going to learn how to use the Oculus or the Meta Quest 2. Um, you're going to learn how to use GitHub as a way, which is the industry standard version control system for, for uh, managing your projects, because it's a part of how the coursework is, uh, uh, is tooled for you to uh, share your work and collaborate. Uh, you're going to learn how to use Visual Studio for the C-sharp scripting um, uh, uh, IDE, the integrated development environment, how that works with Unity, and how to use the debugger and everything. It's very, very fun. Um, Vuforia, which is a comprehensive, scalable, augmented reality platform uh, that integrates perfectly well with Unity, and you'll see that in, in the uh, section two of the course, and uh, also AR Foundation, Unity's framework for multi-platform AR development. And the great thing about Unity is that you create, you build, you build it once and deploy it anywhere. So, you know, Unity, uh, like if you're building for mobile applications, typically in an AR world, you can, you can build in Unity and target an, an Android device or an iOS device. Um, I mean, that's mostly what your <laughs> landscape of things, but there's even Windows real, uh, uh, Windows RT is even possible. So you have a, a, a wide variety or, or even like other things like the HoloLens, I, I guess, and uh, the Magic Leap. Um, you, you could target those things as well. So the, that's what AR Foundation is all about, abstracting away whatever the hardware is so you can just build one time for AR and have it deployed to most AR platforms. Uh, same with VR, uh, actually, it works the same way. Okay, I have said a lot of things, and uh, I think I'm going to hand it over to Kai to talk about the learning experience. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Michael. So with that, uh, let's continue on with the learning experience. Okay. So this is a quick overview of what you can expect. Um, Michael mentioned much of this throughout the whole session. I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit more about orientation. Um, that's the first week of school, so we sometimes call it week zero, and that's where you're going to really be able to learn the management system how you're going to be accessing your assignments, um, how your online classroom is going to work. Um, so you'll get a chance to really get a sense of the learning tools. Again, we want all of you to be successful in this program. So having the opportunity to have a week just to get used to the learning management system is something that we'll provide for you. So that when we do start going through the content, you'll be able to really hit the ground running. Michael mentioned earlier some um, things you should do if you are not um, having some of the math requirements. Um, he mentioned taking a practice course before coming to the program, so you're not really um, head of water. And again, those are great questions to ask. Um, let us know where you're at. I know some of us have two years experience, some five. Um, feel free to share where you feel you fall on that learning curve um, and, and the Q&A box, and we can help you understand what you might need to do to get ready. Um, uh, Mike already went through the learning outcomes. Again, we're going to have video lectures and interviews, much like what we're doing here today. And there will also be opportunities for you to um, have that chance to speak out loud to you during your classes as well. 
You'll be going through discussions and polls in class. All right. <clears throat> We're going to talk a little bit more about the peer, peer career support and mentoring. Um, again, they're going to have continue, and then they also have continue its program access um, for up to 12 months after the program start date. But I'll move on to the career prep, which is what uh, most of you are really interested about, especially for those who are moving in and are career launchers or career switchers. You know, the program really offers some great eye guidance on how to get your foot in the door in this program. I mean, in this industry, depending on which um, title you are looking for, it will help tailor your resume to fit the industry you're trying to go through, what, um, what level of, um, I'm sorry, um, I'm losing my, my thoughts right now. Um, this being able to support you in whichever field you decide to go on and what title you're kind of looking for when it comes to um, AR and uh, UX. Um, maybe, and then you'll be able to talk about how to deliver your elevator pitch, negotiating your salary, salary, and especially if you haven't been in this engineering technical world for long, really understanding just how to write a resume and how that fits in with what you've learned and how to really talk about um, and showcase the learning you've gone through in this program. So a uh, lot to support there. And then once you complete the program, you will receive a completion of the course. You'll be um, awarded a verified digital certificate by NYU Tannen School of Engineering. It will look much like this, and it's a professional certificate. Again, as Michael mentioned, it is a long program. It's a lot to learn, and you'll be able to showcase what you learn um, with this nice digital certificate you can put on your LinkedIn, share with your organization. And again, as you're going through the interview process, it's a great um, certificate to mention and put on your resume. I'll lastly mention that um, Rajneesh is going to put a bit.ly into the chat link, which has just been dropped just now. And it's telling you how to apply. It will take you to the screen that we're looking at um, currently. Um, again, we're looking at the webinar mode. You won't be able to click on it here. But if you click on that link in the chat, it will open up the landing page and you'll be able to apply now if you're ready to do so. Program advisor in the background helping you with that. And they're going to be the best folks to reach out to, especially regarding financial um, and logisticals. I know lots of us are coming from all over the world, different time zones. If you're wondering about things like that, they're good folks to ask and can help you with your particular logistical needs. So Michael will come back on. And, you know, as we're going through here, is there anything you wanted to address first, Michael? Or Sure. Well, yeah. Do you want to start there, off with uh, the... About um, <clears throat> creating projects to sell after section four. So, I mean, by the time you've, reach section four before we head into section five you've learned everything you need to uh for how to approach building an actual xr project um whether or not that they're ready to sell i, I think that that's really a matter of product development and understanding a little bit you know more about uh i mean we're not te we're not teaching you how to build assets for 3d environments we're just teaching you how to um bring assets in and how to prototype with them um uh, and to build prototype level um, work. So really, you know, we're not, we're not building polished, finished products in, in this course as much as we are um, learning how you might approach building uh, a polished, finished product. Uh, we're giving the foundational skills to um, learn, uh, you know, uh, approach project development create prototypes of those pro projects for further development in the future, because, you know, uh, like any, like any good product, it takes a long time to sort of hone it in and, and, and make it uh, acceptable. Um, and, uh, and, and also, you know, you'll learn along the way, what types of folks you'll need to work with in order to create a uh, uh, high fidelity sellable work, right. Or, or things like if you're trying to sell a product, you're trying to make a game or, or, or trying to make a uh, narrative experience, you'll, you'll be learning about what, okay. I, you know, at the end, you'll say, I know how it all comes together. Now I need to work with these different types of folks that do, you know, make three art, 3D assets or animators or whoever in order to uh, really bring this uh, vision to life. So, you know, by the end, you're going to understand the vision of what XR is, what it can be, what you can do with it, and how the, what are the nuts and bolts of how it works so that you'll be able to take that to the next step in your career uh, and, you know, de develop those things that you want to develop further. Uh, and take those ideas uh, and make them realities down the road uh, as you, you know, start your, as, you, as you've taken the first steps on that journey in this course. Michael, which language will you start with? Python, or should we look for an overall programming fundamental? And then I, I'll also piggyback on that question too. You started to talk about it a little bit at the beginning with folks who may not have the math skill that they need and what they should do to prep. So maybe you can kind of tie that in as far as what we, I know there are no real prereq prereqs, but what can someone do to really be prepared um, for their first week when we hit the ground running after orientation week? 
Sure, sure. I mean, from a mathematics standpoint, there's, you know, really just basic math is going to be useful to you. 3D, I mean, I can tell you that 3D graphics are and 3D uh, math is base is essentially what's called linear algebra. So you could take some introductions. To, if you're really like, I have no idea what's going on, some really basic introductions to linear algebra um, would be uh, useful. And even ahead of that, if you want to to do uh, basic algebra, like algebra one, like looking at quadratic functions and learning about, you know, variables, uh, you know, uh, X equals Y and, and so, so forth. Um, we don't, you know, that level of like written down, like formulaic math is not what we do uh, in when we're actually out there engineering and working in Unity. It's all just, uh, you, you kind of learn the intuition for what a vector is and what it represents. Um, and that's what we're, we we kind of cover a lot of that. So as long as you're, you're comfortable with, you know, basic, the idea of, add, you know, adding, multiplying, you know, basic arithmetic uh, with order of operations using parentheses and that type of thing, um, you know, you, you'll be, you'll be okay. But if you really want to, if you really want to be like overly prepared, you could get into some uh, like Khan Academy or something, basic linear algebra, um, uh, intro intro courses to just sort of get your head around some of the ideas. Um, that's on the math side here about what language to start with Python, maybe uh, looking for o overall programming fundamental to, well, to be, to be perfectly honest, like if you're planning, if you're trying to learn programming for this course, you should just start with C sharp, uh, the .NET um, runtime and, and all that, the, the whole language itself is really approachable. It's really easy to use. It is a strongly typed language. I also, you know, uh, I also recommend, you know, you can start with more other universally um, available and usable languages. Python is one of them, as is uh, JavaScript. Both great places to start, but they are dynamically typed languages, as you know, if you don't know what that is, you'll find out. <laughs> and uh, so you can start there, and it's, it's perfectly fine because you use the same programming concepts um, of, you know, how, you know, how to manage variables and, you know, how to to control the flow through a program. Um, but, you know, if you're just want to learn, just uh, start um, uh, start with with uh, with C sharp because it's really easy and approachable and it's actually what Unity uses. So you'll be uh, you'll be, uh, you know, really on ahead of the curve if you take a C sharp uh, introductory program uh, before jumping into this course. Might as well uh, just stay in the family. Um, uh, yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah, but all three of those are fantastic languages. I mean, uh, so uh, Alexandra says, do you think Python is the best language for metaverse? I wouldn't say that necessarily. Um, it depends on the tool you're using. Languages are just tools and they have their own, uh, just like any tool in, the, in your tool belt, it has its purpose and its use and they all do different things and uh, uh, better. Um, you know, most of the world's hardcore software runs on C++. Uh, or even, and most drivers for technology devices run on C itself. Uh, so, you know, those, those languages are, um, you might consider those more software engineering based languages or systems languages, which is true. They are, but they're, you know, but they're really kind of hard to learn and kind of hardcore. Uh, higher, higher level languages like Python and JavaScript and C Sharp, those are the things that you're going to use to create content and script out what other applications built with other um, other types of tools, you know, that's, that's the reason for scripting, right? Because we want to add behavior to an already running program without having to recompile and rebuild the whole program from scratch. Um, and so, you know, you let every language do the thing it does best in the environment that it does the best in. I, I, in the, we see like on the web, we use uh, JavaScript is sort of taking over as, as the primary tool for, you know, adding logic-based function, functionality on the web. Uh, we have in the science community and, and machine learning, Python is really important. Um, and out here in the visual graphics world, uh, we have the C family languages, you know, C++ and C Sharp um, are, you know, uh, are really dominating in the game engine world. Um, but there's all types of languages. There's, there's, a, there's a game engine called Godot that's scripted with Lua. Uh, Lua is a fun little scripting language in itself. So there's, there's so many different languages out there, but they all do their own uh, the, you know, if you're really going to build the metaverse, you're going to use a lot of them. So you might as well start lear start learning a lot of them if that's what you if you're looking to be a developer uh, in, in this space.
Okay, thank you so much, Michael. Let's drop that bit.ly one more time so it's right accessible for everyone. Um, so if you're ready to apply, you can click on that li link right now. Click on the apply now button that you see on my screen here uh, when you access it from the link. You can also um, email us if you have any more questions. Um, it's very easy to get in touch with us, nyu at emeritus.org. There's never too late. Class is just around the corner, so um, you know move quickly. And we hope to see you soon. But before we um, sign off, I'm going to give um, Michael an opportunity, if you'd like, just to kind of um, any last words of wisdom to the folks at home. Um, is there any words of wisdom you want to give to those who are considering joining the program or any last and final thoughts you'd like to share with the group? Sure. I, I would just say that, you know, in summary, like the world is at a very interesting transitional moment moving from our 2D window of screen-based content into a 3D world of mixed reality uh, where the, our real world is colliding with a virtual world. And the, you know, there's no better time to jump in and be a part of you know, creating what's possible in that realm uh, than right now. The, the tools we have at our disposal are incredible, easy to use, I mean, relatively speaking, once you get into them um, from what they could be. You know, uh, back, back when I started this, uh, my journey, it was really uh, building from things from, from bootstrapping from the ground up. And now we have robust tools that are easy to dive into uh, and make a, you know, we can make a VR experience in, in like one day if you wanted, you know, just, just a rough, it'd be rough, but you can do it. And that's, you know, we do that in the course. Um, the, uh, you know, so the, the, the fact is now is a really exciting time. And so be, if you feel like you're on the, on the edge of like, you're really, you're maybe you're passionate about the subject, you really can you believe in the vision and you want to be a part of the creating of that future, just jump in the game, get off the bench, come in, come in. The water's fun. You know, it's a fun place, uh, a fun thing to be a part of. And yes, it is work. Yes, it is hard. Uh, it is challenging. But if you push yourself beyond the challenge, you're, I know that you're capable of, of doing so much. Everybody, you know, I see it all the time and in people that are, you know, at first uh, totally unsure. And then by the end uh, of, of the course, they're they're just, they're building all kinds of amazing things. And, you know, I see it in my undergrad classes even. So no matter where you are in your career, uh, you know, uh, anybody, you know, it's never a bad time to learn this type of stuff and to, to make a change and to, to try something new and to try something different. It's, um, and if you're, you know, it's an exciting time for it. So that's what, that's where I'll leave it right there. Thank you, Michael. And thanks again for taking time out of your busy schedule. We um, really, truly appreciate you coming here to talk about the program. And if you think of anything else, please don't hesitate to get back to us. We will definitely figure out a way to get that question answered. And we wish you all luck. So with that, we wish you a warm um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you all. Thank you so much. We'll see you in class. Bye, everyone.